the Varangian Guard, a distinguished unit of the Byzantine army, existed from the late 9th to the 14th century. Comprising of Norse, Swedish and Rus warriors, they were hand-picked to serve as personal bodyguards of the Byzantine emperors. These Norsemen, with their exceptional combat skills, unwavering loyalty and distinctive appearance, made them an indispensable part of Byzantine military might. Clad in elaborate armour and wielding formidable weapons, the Varangian Guard stood as the epitome of medieval chivalry and martial prowess. The Varangian Guard was a mercenary unit. Within its ranks were mainly Norsemen, that served as an elite bodyguard and as shock troops for the Eastern Roman Empire in Constantinople from as early as the year 874 all the way to the 14th century. Until the late 11th century, the mercenary group kept an almost entirely Norse cast to the organisation. The Norse Varangian Guardsmen would be recognised by their long hair and ornamented dragons sewn into their chainmail. They also often wielded battle axes gilded with gold. The duties of the Varangian Guard were varied. They would stand as the personal bodyguard for the Emperor, as well as fight for him on the battlefield. They also had to swear oaths of loyalty and had policing duties, such as guarding the royal treasury and were wardens in imperial prisons. These warriors patrolled the halls of the Great Palace, accompanied the Emperor to war, and kept order on the streets. At the onset of the Viking Age, in around the early 9th century, a group of Norse warriors known as Vikings descended upon the shores of England. While most Vikings targeted England, some ventured eastward, enticed by the allure of Arabic silver sailing down the rivers of Eastern Europe and plundering as they progressed. Some of these Vikings chose to settle in Eastern Europe and were subsequently referred to as the Rus or Kievan Rus, a term derived from Old Norse meaning ones who row. Over time they grew in power with their leaders adopting Slavic names. In the late 10th century a dispute arose among the sons of Prince Svatoslav of Kiev. Vladimir I of Kiev enlisted 6,000 warriors from nearby Sweden. These soldiers not only assisted in securing the region, but also led to the foundation of the famed Varangian Guard. Less than a decade later, Basil II of the Byzantine Empire sought military assistance from Vladimir to quell potential threats to his throne. To sweeten the deal, Basil offered his sister's hand in marriage, contingent upon Vladimir's conversion to Christianity. Agreeing to these terms, Vladimir embraced Christianity and dispatched his Norse warriors, numbering 6,000 to Constantinople. This formidable army became known as the Varangian Guard, leaving an indelible mark on Byzantine history. The guard would make an immediate impact. Led by Basil himself, they launched swift and ruthless attacks, leaving their enemies helpless against their ferocity. These warriors, described as frightening both in appearance and in equipment, fearlessly swung their swords and battle axes, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. The Varangians became Basil's trusted bodyguards, taking on various roles, including policing and accompanying the Emperor in wars. An Arab traveller marvelled at their physical prowess, describing them as tall as palm trees, fair-skinned and fearsomely armed. Despite their occasionally mundane duties, some Varangian warriors found excitement in serving the Emperor. One such warrior carved his name into the marble of the majestic Hagia Sophia out of sheer boredom, a testament to their adventurous spirit. He left runic inscriptions on the marble bearing the name Halfden. Warriors like Harald Hardrada amassed considerable riches during their service, 
contemporary Byzantine chroniclers note with a mix of terror and fascination that the Scandinavians were frightening both in appearance and equipment. They attacked with reckless rage, and neither cared about losing blood, nor their wounds. This depiction likely refers to the berserkers, who were believed to enter a trance-like state, granting them superhuman strength, and rendering them impervious to pain caused by their injuries. With so many Norsemen in the Varangian Guard, many berserkers and Ulfhednar also would have joined the ranks. These fierce fighters, often depicted wearing animal skins, struck terror into the hearts of their enemies. Their presence in Norse history remains iconic. Berserkers were revered for their unmatched ferocity, often howling like beasts before they charged into battle, embodying the spirit of untamed aggression and fearlessness. When the Byzantine Emperor died, the Varangians had the unique right of running into the imperial treasury and taking as much gold and as many gems as they could carry, as a procedure called palace pillaging. This privilege enabled many Varangians to return home as wealthy men, which encouraged even more Scandinavians to enlist. As the centuries progressed, the Norsemen would convert to Christianity and the old Norse gods would fade from this world. Consequently, the Varangian guard would all become Christians. However, one notable warrior prince would enter the ranks of this elite fighting unit. Harold Sigurdsson, now remembered to history as Harald Hardrada, would have to escape from Norway after the Battle of Stiklestad where his older brother King Olaf II of Norway was killed in battle. This devastating defeat and loss of kin would lead him to join the Varangian Guard, knowing staying in Norway would mean death under Canute the Great, the ruler of the North Sea Empire. Harald made his way to Constantinople with nothing to lose. He embarked on a daring journey in search of his fortune it was in this thriving city that he became a member of the Varangian Guard. The Varangians were infamous for their revelry, leading to the nickname the Emperor's Wineskins, and were recognised for their signature weapon, the imposing two-handed axe. During an era preceding the First Crusade, when the Byzantine Empire clashed with the expansive Fatimid Caliphate spanning the Middle East, North Africa, and Sicily. Harold encountered Arab Muslims for the first time. This momentous event occurred in the summer of the year 1035, during a fierce naval battle in the Mediterranean. Harold would have been on a huge Byzantine galley, and the sight of the Vikings wielding enormous six-foot axes was unprecedented for the Arabs. However, they had a weapon. Greek fire a medieval substance similar to napalm. This was entirely new for Harold and his warriors. This formidable incendiary weapon proved devastating against the Vikings' wooden vessels, leaving a lasting impression on both sides of the conflict. Nevertheless, the Byzantines emerged triumphant, driving the Arabs across Anatolia to the Syrian border. During this conflict, Harold rose through the ranks of the Varangians, eventually becoming their de facto leader before a peace agreement was reached. As part of the treaty, a Byzantine delegation was granted permission to travel to Jerusalem for the restoration of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which had been raised in the year 1009. This journey led Harold into his first encounters with desert warfare when they traversed over land to see the site of Christ's baptism in the Jordan Valley. The desert posed a significant threat, plagued by marauders preying on camel caravans along the trade routes between Cairo and Damascus. As chronicled in Scandinavian sagas, Harold took it upon himself 
to clear the roads of these bandits and, subsequently, cleansed his conscience in the waters of the River Jordan. This expedition marked the farthest eastward extent of Harold's life adventures. The internal strife within the Fatimid Caliphate escalated when the Emirate of Sicily, a realm under the Caliphate's authority, rebelled openly. Sensing an opportunity, the Byzantines decided to launch an invasion. Harold assumed command of the Varangians and played a pivotal role in the conquest of Messina and several other cities. He and his men amassed considerable wealth through looting during these campaigns. Despite the heavy-handed rule of the Byzantine leadership, which led to a revolt among their Norman and Lombard mercenaries in the year 1041, Harold remained loyal. However, the revolt resulted in the Byzantines losing all of their territorial gains, not only in Sicily, but also in Italy. Ultimately, the Normans seized control, establishing a kingdom that endured for nearly seven centuries. Meanwhile, Harold was called back to Constantinople, where intrigues and power struggles were rampant within the imperial palace. Emperor Michael IV lay on his deathbed, with his life slipping away. His wife, Empress Zoe, captivated by the imposing figure of the blonde and formidable Harold, sought his allegiance for the imminent ascension for her nephew, Michael V, to the throne. Zoe, renowned for her beauty, was equally infamous for her treachery. Rumours circulated that she and her lover, the ailing Emperor Michael IV, had conspired to eliminate her previous husband, Emperor Romanus III, paving the way for her own reign. However, the treachery only intensified with Michael V's rise to power after his uncle's demise in the year 1041. Swiftly seizing control, he dismissed the Varangians, replacing them with his personal guards. Zoe found herself arrested and banished to a secluded nunnery, despite still holding the affection of the people. Zoe's unjust imprisonment triggered a popular uprising in Constantinople, resulting in intense street battles that left significant portions of the city in ruins. During the turmoil, Harold was arrested and imprisoned in the midst of the revolt. Harold was freed, however, by his loyal Varangian guard. Under Harold's leadership, the Varangians would send for Zoe and re-establish order on the streets. They would eventually restore Zoe to her rightful throne. As for Michael, he was banished, allegedly with Harold himself blinding him before his departure. The dethroned emperor met his demise shortly after. At this pinnacle of power, Harold stood as the head of the Varangian Guard, acting as Zoe's protector and, as per Scandinavian accounts, her lover. Despite potentially harbouring ambitions of becoming emperor, Harold, considered a barbarian by the imperial court, could never ascend to the throne. Zoe instead wed a bureaucrat named Constantine. Harold's conquests and plundering had amassed immense wealth. Harold would escape from Constantinople and would return to Norway to become its king. He later met his end in 1066 at the Battle of Stamford Bridge, being remembered as one of the greatest Viking leaders in history. However, the glory days of the Varangian Guard were numbered. In the 11th century, significant changes swept through the Guard as the composition of the warriors evolved. Following the Norman conquest in 1066, exiled Anglo-Saxon warriors flocked to Constantinople, marking a new chapter in the Guard's storied history. The Varangian Guard regained some of its old Scandinavian flavour when Harold Hardrada's grandson, 
Sigurd I of Norway, also known as Sigurd the Crusader, went on the Norwegian Crusade to the Holy Land. After fighting battles against the Muslims, King Sigurd in the year 1110 left the rest of his force, who originally numbered 6,000 men, to join the Varangian Guard. King Sigurd returned home with fewer than a hundred of his personal warriors. Less than a hundred years later, the Fourth Crusade was sparked, an expedition aimed to recapture the Muslim-controlled city of Jerusalem. However, a sequence of economic and political events culminated in the Crusader army's sack of Constantinople, rather than the conquest of Egypt, as originally planned. This led to the Crusader army attacking Constantinople. The Varangians would defend the city, and the fighting was described as extremely bloody. Nevertheless, the Emperor fled from the city, and the Crusaders looted, pillaged, and destroyed it. Most of the Varangian Guard would meet their end here, at the Siege of Constantinople in the year 1204, and went out fighting, like their pagan ancestors, having no fear of death. Although the order may have been reconstituted by Emperor Theodore to try and strengthen his rightful claim as ruler, the Varangian Guard would never regain their reputation and prominence, and their glory days were now nothing but a memory. If the Varangian Guard were still operational by the 15th century, the last of them would have been slain in the fall of Constantinople in the year 1453 when Mehmet the Conqueror took the city. The story of the Varangian Guard and the Norsemen within it exemplifies the remarkable fusion of cultures in the medieval world. Through their bravery, loyalty and military prowess, Norse warriors left an indelible mark on Byzantine history. The Varangian Guard stands as a testament to the enduring legacy of these Norsemen who found a new home in the heart of Byzantium, shaping the empire's destiny and contributing to the rich tapestry of human history. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you all soon for another History Profile.